Hi guys. Well, it is a soon to be frosty winter night down there in the sunshine state where I am uh, escaping the snow down here in this trailer with the uh, with the broken furnace here on this chilly. It is a Saturday night. It is an exciting Saturday night, January twentieth, twenty four. So. Uh, as we begin our one year slog towards a uh, a Donald Trump presidency uh, I think if you are not familiar with the work of Terence McKenna we're gonna go out on a limb here at Collapse Chronicles and uh, it is finally time for the first time I believe in history to bring Terrence McKenna to uh, <laughs> to Collapse Chronicles. I am not going to get into an hour-long rant about who Terrence McKenna is. Suffice it to say, uh, <clears throat> Terrence McKenna is the reason I am sitting in this trailer tonight. Terrence McKenna is the reason I am a doomer. And Terrence McKenna is the reason that Collapse Chronicles and that other channel are on the air. Uh, so anyway, uh, I'm just going to dive right into it. And I have just randomly gone on the internet where you can find thousands and thousands of hours of Terrence McKenna videos. Uh, we lost Terrence back in 2000. The late, great Terrence McKenna. Where are you? Good Lord, do we need Terrence McKenna today? So all of these videos were published in the 1990s when Terrence McKenna was trying to explain to everybody how doomed we are. And uh, so we're, we're, we're going to dive right in. In no particular order, I think I have 10 Terrence McKenna shorts to share with you. With no further ado, take it away, Terrence McKenna. And then the question is, well, how, do, how does one um, uh, download a new operating system? Well, first of all, you have to clear some space on your disk. Um, the best way to do this is probably with a pharmacological agent. Um, you think of some while I have a drink of water. Think of some. Psilocybin is an excellent disk cleaner. Uh, you can put a lot of things in the trash and have them just disappear uh, with a uh, psilocybin upgrade. Uh, uh, other pharmacological agents that will clear your disc are uh, ayahuasca. And of course, these are gentle clearings of the disc, which take five, six, seven hours uh, if you're in a hurry to dump that old data and leap right into the new operating system. Uh, click on the button marked dimethyltryptamine. Uh, a compressed disk erasure will immediately be downloaded, unstuffed, bin hexed, implemented, installed, run, and, uh, and you will find yourself with an entirely different head. Um, you know, I have to this day. Okay, we're we're not going to spend too much time on the on the uh, on the mushrooms. <laughs> I just couldn't resist leading off with that one. Okay, some more stuff that we talk about more on this channel. It is overpopulation. 
pollution is what's driving us crazy. All other problems, toxic waste disposal, epidemic disease, resource extraction, degradation of the environment, collapse of the atmosphere, inability to satisfy third world aspirations, uh, all of these problems are population problems. And uh, capitalism doesn't want to talk about it because capitalism is not a human being. Capitalism is a Moloch, a god, a, a, a god of bloody sacrifice that sees human beings as ants. And the more ants there are, the more offerings there can be to Moloch, but this is not a good situation for uh, Sands. And, uh, you know, capitalism is a gun pointed at the head of global civilization. If you read the theoreticians of capitalism, Adam Smith and so forth, capitalism assumes an unlimited exploitable frontier. There is no such creature, so it has turned pathological. The only frontier now left to exploit is not a frontier in space, but a frontier in time. We steal the future from our children by... There... Oh, okay. That goes on, but we're going to move along our unhappy addicted ego driven condition has become not simply the source of our own unhappiness that was bad enough but now it's the source of great discomfort and dislocation for all life and human society on the planet we, we are out of control. We are basically severely addicted to things and cannot stop ourselves. Uh, and we know, or we should know, that there is not enough petroleum, heavy metal, so forth and so on, in the planet to give all the thing addicts all the things that we know they must have in order to be happy. We have spread this intellectual virus from pole to pole to Turkmenistan and Borneo, to the upper Amazon and to the Tajiks. What are we going to do about this? Well, so far we've been treating it like an endless garden party. There's no serious plan on the table to deal with this at all. Culture is a shabby lie, or at least this culture is a shabby lie. I mean, if you, if you work like a dog, you get 260 channels of bad television and a German automobile. Uh, you know, what, what kind of perfection is that? Our, we have uh, our secular society, religion is uh, completely devalued uh, and ob consumer object fetishism is the only kind of worth that we collectively recognize. I'm sure you've all seen the t-shirt that says he, notice he, who dies with the most toys wins. Uh, that is, in fact, the banner under which we're flying here. And the level of unhappiness is immense. I mean, the level of unhappiness among the poor, they've always been miserable. So we've managed to create something entirely new in human history, an utterly miserable ruling class. I mean, you think there's no excuse for that. There is life carrying that. What is this all about? Uh, is it carrying us toward extinction so that the rest of nature can achieve an enormous sign of relief and then get back to the business of nest building, uh, mating flights, and overposturing and whatever it is that they're doing out there? Uh, or is it carrying us toward um, some kind of a transition? No one of us, I think, can imagine that history could go on for another thousand years. I mean, what would it look like at the current rate of population growth, spread of epidemic disease, rate of invention, connectivity, depletion of 
resources, the atmosphere. It is impossible to conceive of another thousand years of human history. History then is ending. His history. Yep. 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 Yeah. Now all of this was at least 25 to 35 years ago that we were hearing this from Terrence. But now technology throws a curve. And the curve is that we live so long that we figure out what a scam this is. We figure out that what you're supposed to work for isn't worth having. We figure out that our politicians are buffoons. We figure out that professional scientists are reputation-building, grab-tailing weasels. We discover that all organizations are corrupted by ambition. Um, you know, you get the picture. We figure it out. Well, then, as intellectuals, and anybody who figures it out is an intellectual, believe me, because they're slinging the programming to push you the other way. So, uh, so then intellectuals, defined as people who figure it out, uh, discover that you are alienated. That's what figuring it out means. It means you understand that the BMW, the Harvard degree, that's whatever it is, that this is all baloney and manipulated and hyped and that mostly you have a bunch of clueless people who are figuring out which fork they should use. Yep, them clueless people. All right. What do we got next in the hopper, Terrence? Uh, I think it's just going to get weirder and weirder and weirder, and finally, it's going to be so weird that people are going to have to talk about how weird it is. And yes, they are. Uh, the mushroom said to me once, it said, this is what it's like when a species prepares to depart for the stars. You don't depart for the stars under calm and orderly conditions. It's a fire in a madhouse. And that's what we have, the fire in the madhouse at the end of time. This is what it's like when a species prepares to move on to the next dimension. The entire destiny of all life on the planet is tied up in this. We are not acting for ourselves or from ourselves. We are, we happen to be the point species on a transformation that will affect every living organism on this planet at its conclusion. And that is... We are that. Does he go on? Okay, I could go on with any of these. We're just getting a few snippets for the, those of you not aware of this man. Uh, there is nobody minding the store, as far as I can tell. This is why I'm so unsympathetic to conspiracy theory. We could use a few conspiracies. Nobody is minding the store. Everybody is getting rich, personally rich, and so they don't have time for, you know, to advance the Aryan race or the Council of Zion or any of this fantasy and illusion that haunts the world of conspiracy theory. Uh, rather, it seems uh, everything is being left pretty much to develop on its own because people are afraid to grab or touch the levers and buttons in the control room of the historical vehicle. Uh, and what that means then is that people who can cut through these many, many illusions, the illusion of materialism, the illusion of business as usual, the illusion of benevolent institutions carefully guiding us toward reasonable destinies. If you cut through all that, if you disabuse yourself of all that, uh, 
you, you will empower yourself to eventually be able to stand up in delicate social and political situations and just say, bullshit. That's bullshit. And this is worth considering doing uh, simply because we have an imperiled planet on our hands. We have been for a long, long time the victims of illusion. Western civilization, Stefan Daedalus was right. History is a nightmare from which one must awaken, quite literally. I mean, we have been blind to what we have been doing. We are blind at this moment to what we are doing. If in a single moment the actual nature of our predicament were to fully make itself felt in the mind of any one of us, I think it would be paralyzing. It would be horrifying. We, we have waited till the last moment of the last hour. The house is burning down around us and we rouse ourselves from the stupor of materialism, the stupor of Christianity and scientism, the stupor of male dominance, sexism, and racism, if we don't rouse ourselves from this stupor, the momentum toward extinction is now practically irreversible. You know, the Grateful Dead like to sing that song, we need a miracle every day. We certainly, uh, we certainly do. Good luck, one miracle per day. All right, where were we here? Them, a harder one, a more radical one, the one that might get me shot. Do not, in some profoundly metaphysical sense, consume. Do not consume. For obvious reasons, and then not so obvious reasons. The obvious reasons are, the, the fetish for objects made of matter is wrecking the planet. If everybody on Earth had what the people in the front row here have, there wouldn't be enough metal, glass, plastic, and petroleum in the planet to provide that kind of lifestyle to the billions of people who now aspire. None of this stuff brings happiness anyway. I recently had... Larry... Yeppers. Alright, moving along. Hey, I have never done DMT. Uh, Oops, I think we already finished that one. That was, uh, yeah, that's the one we started with. <laughs> okay, a few more times. I said to them, I said, so how can we save the world? And it hesitated roughly a third of a second and said every woman should bear only one natural child. I thought about this for a long time before I ever publicly mentioned it to anyone, and I realized, you see, I think that what is destroying us are two things. Number one, an uncontrolled rise in population that wipes out every good intention, every social program, every uh, a expansion of agriculture succumbs to expanded population. This is destroying us. The other thing that is destroying us is that we are not properly utilizing uh, the intelligence, talent, and so forth of half of our population, the female half of the population. Now, people say that we must, you know, women must be promoted and to professional positions and power positions, and, and of course this is true, and I agree, but what is really holding women back is that they spend a staggering amount of their creative lifespan raising children. And, uh, and, and he goes on from there, uh, hallelujah, by the way, uh... Yep, yep, yep. But you're gonna 
you, you can find all of these and 10,000 more. We got two or three more. But through a realization that we are sick and no doctor can cure us because we're not that kind of sick. It's soul sickness. I mean, it has to be soul sickness. And when you see stuff like Chernobyl or the Kuwaiti oil fields or the Hanford Nuclear Reservation in Washington, when you realize what this really means, then you realize, you know, this is a, this is a mad species. This is a terminally depraved species. And what is required is a return to a model that can heal. And this is what shamanism has always been about. And okay, then we're going to jump ahead. She talks about shamanism. We're going to listen to one more piece. Oh, I don't know where to dive in, people, I guess, about here. We have, we are so deep into the historical nightmare that we can't ever remember any other way of doing business. I mean, we know we're messed up. We know we're unhappy. But what's to be done, you know? I mean, we have a million minor fixes and people peddling all of these things. I mean, you've just been through the aisles. You know what I'm talking about. But somehow salvation itself becomes an impediment to salvation. I mean, once you see 500 forms of salvation being sold at prices you can't afford, the very notion of salvation becomes obscene. You know, it becomes one more layer in the obscene layering that takes meaning out of life and disempowers us and turns us into a subscription customer. That seems to be how we always are being forced to end up. Well, the only way out of this, I think, is to, um, it takes courage because you have to turn your back on your culture in the most profound sense there is, because there are many ways to turn your back on your culture. I mean, if everyone's wearing gray, you can wear green. That's one way to turn your back on a culture. But another way is to break its laws. Now, that's a little more serious and, you know, brings in big philosophical issues. But in fact, the culture is an enormous arrow pointing, go this way. And you know what lies that way? Impoverishment, madness, degradation, and death. That's where the culture is pointing. You can see it. You can see it. Just look where we're headed. Uh, uh, if everyone on earth aspires to the kind of lifestyle that you people can enjoy by virtue of having paid the money to be at a scene like this, there isn't enough glass, metal, and plastic in the planet to make that many celicas and uh, jaguars and bluebirds and snowbirds and all the rest of this crap. So what is needed is uh, an awakening. Now I mentioned... What is... An awakening. Yeah. Does he have some more to say about that? Uh... No, uh, what do we have? One or two more? Is this one? That's all right. One more, and I think you'll get the point. Terrence McKenna, love him or hate him, he is what he is. So wrap it up, Terrence.
yep, yep, I think yep. that is a yep. fine way to end up the January 20th, 24, uh, Terrence McKenna Sampler. <laughs> yep, the end of democratic freedoms. <sighs> anyway, if you are not a a fan of Terrence McKenna, it is easy to change that. As I say, you will find thousands and thousands and thousands of hours of listening to Terrence. And if you want to take his advice on the heroic doses of mushrooms and ayahuasca and whatnot, uh, feel free. What got me here? So I will let you go out and uh, make your own call about Terrence McKenna. Terrence, rest in peace. You will live on in the Doomosphere. And we love you, brother. Bye, guys. <laughs>